Hi, uh, this is uh, Patrick Goody, continuing our interview series for Through the Mesh. And I have uh, Anna Price, who's uh, one of our um, respondents for the show. Uh, she is a public intellectual involving imaging and uh, culture and is currently a visiting professor at the University of Danube in, in Krems, Austria, as amongst other things, and also um, published many times with the Institute of Network Culture and otherwise. And so um, is there any anything else we need to say about you, Anna? Well, I'm also working in practice. So you have a photo studio and, and, and in the back of my uh, uh, figure appearing. Uh, so there will be an old studio from the beginning 20th century opened by my grandfather. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, there's a huge archive which is mm -hmm. uh, being inside. And I think it has all to do with things that we are researching today because photography, it, according to things I'm, I'm doing, uh, is being centered as the main uh, uh, epistemic bubble. Uh, well, as you know, we just uh, went through the, I don't necessarily say opening, but I'd say the you know in, in initial phases of the exhibition here at Neiman Limassol. Um, I think that there are things unfolding at all times because you know internet culture unfolds at all times. You know the general conceit of the show in which uh, Wade, um, I, I put together and Wade Wallerstein from Transfer uh, joined me on is this notion of uh, biopolitics versus infopolitics. So say, for example, since, um, you know, since uh, the, the creation of the Westphalian state, you know, we've had the notion of Foucauldian biopolitics and, and, and such, and we've been wrestling with that hydra for what, two, 300 years now and such. And for the last 50, 60 years, we've been dealing with the emerging nature of info politics. In other words, one of the things that I was interested in when putting this together was in living in Abu Dhabi, in, let's see, let's see here, I was watching uh, countries like Russia, China, and especially um, Iran, you know, looking at creating a national infrastructure that, it, a, you know, infrastructure that it could just basically separate, separate itself from the world and just lift off like a great mothership. And of course, another Dina, uh, uh, Dina and Vedran with their pavilion, you know, with basically the idea is that one of the only ways that you can usually get in at that case is through the, through the dark web. But to me, what I thought was very interesting was that, um, and tying it into your work, was the notion that, say in Iran, one of the only ways that news comes through, um, you know, almost unfiltered is through Instagram. And, you know, this is, you know, very much a infopolitic, you know, regime of images. And so the thing is, is that going against, you know, go, going, going against, you know, the, um, you know, or at least going around the normal firewalls. And not necessarily that I want to talk about Iran so much, but I think this is just a good, good example. And I mean, also, you know, China as well, and, and et cetera. So the thing is, is that what do you, um, I'm just going to open things up a little bit. What do you think is your opinion about the kind of the, the, differ, the different between the biopolitic and the infopolitic and, you know, how this is relating to the regime of images and, you know, how this, how, how this is kind of laying bare the, the, the you know, the, the, the scaffold of culture as it is, it is evolving. It's actually, it's a really interesting question. I would like first to, to get a step back. The problem between a uh, uh, relationship between biopolitics and infopolitics, at least at the place where I am, which is an uh, ex-socialist uh, country, uh, yeah. was it, it implied dualism, in which we were thinking about control of body versus control of information or mind. So in this implied dualism, which you can find in many of control systems, which are doing censorship or which are doing passport controls and, and uh, trafficking of goods controls, we can uh, see that, that something has changed 
with datafication of bodies. And for the last 10 years from quantify self movement in which we are having information as the body and the information influencing to the bodies, for example, in, a, in a, uh, work with genes, with viruses as well, mm -hmm. which are going through the information boundaries much easier than before, like viruses today, and sure. which are managing to, to infect different types of bodies. You can see that the whole situation was, uh, when it was set as dualistic, was actually too rough and too limited. That we need huh. to see basically the biopolitics as inscribed in infopolitics in the way that it is also a part of the information. So I would just go to a, a basic paradigm between in the field in which I'm researching, and it's related to images and sure. relation between uh, genotype, phenotype, and something which I called phototype. So genotype and phenotype would be the information base and the realization of the information in something we call the real body. So genotype would be the full pool of information which we are bringing, and a phenotype would be something as its realization. If we want to control the phenotype, we need to take the passport. But if we, win, we want to con control or the body, and if we, win, we want to control genotype, we need to take the whole information back up for the body in order to control. So I was trying to think in terms of photographs as a possible model of transmission of the information and uh, thinking about phototypes in generative and neural networks in which they have been restoring something we call genotype or complex information. So how is it possible that the image of the body carries the complex information through the nerve system, which means only through Instagram for the flat screen for something and managing to bypass the limit which has been set to body itself by transmitting the information, which means if a body dies, the information continues to go about the body. So it breaks the barrier. And at the same time, is it possible to use media such as photography in order to restore the crucial information? So yes. I was concerned in my recent work about possibilities to restore the information of the dead body, which is not the subject of biocontrol. So dead body or the body that is missing would be something that is no more present as phenotype, but it, there is something which is an abstract pool of information of the genotype, which can be restored in many ways. Some of them is some kind of genetic database, but also it is possible to think through the concept of image database, which is generating all the complex possibilities, for example, in neural networks. So when we are speaking about, for example, projects as such uh, as uh, these people do not exist by Philip Wang or some other mm -hmm. artists which are doing the neural networks, uh, a, a restoration of possible combinations. We can also think about possibilities that information carried by something as basic as the image can bring through bodies of missing uh, subjects or missing, for example, species. Mm. So we can restore combinations of something that is original body that has been prohibited by the biopolitics. And in this sense, this biopolitics is basically politics against animals which was our history about, in which we are going to be maybe capable of restoring the basic information of these bodies. And maybe literally uh, we are going to be in the position to restore also the phenotype by using the reconstructed genotype or using something like smart drugs or so. So I would like to think in this kind of not macro uh, uh, yeah. conditions between uh, uh, biopolitics and infopolitics. I would like to go somewhere in uh, genes and somewhere where these two informations are meeting. We can speak about uh, control of two types of material, a body material, a live material, and information material from which the body or real material is being reconstructed. And the, the other thing is, is that does, does the notion of, of uh, necropolitics also in, insert itself here, here, is here as well? Yeah. You know, that's as pro prohibitory notion. Yeah. Also, I, I, I think about, I can't remember the movie, I can't remember the documentary, but Harun Faraki looking at the, the early use of the, um, 
camera as as scientific measure you know measuring apparatus you know and how it was used in in architecture and also in in biometrics but the thing is that on one hand that's an encoding and in this way this that you know that's an encoding this way we're talking about a decoding you know which i think is very interesting but also when we're talking about decoding i think that also the uh you know the, the neoliberal apparatus is also thinking about then seeing how to use that um, as you know a, a a site for extraction, you know as well. And I think this is this is something that that concerns me as well. And the other thing that I'm also thinking about here when we're thinking about encoding a, or you know basically encoding and decoding is the notion of steganography. Mm-hmm. In other words, what signals can be placed in these things or possibly are hidden or even unintentionally hidden in the system, you know, not necessarily, you know, because steganography or the, you know, or, or the encoding in an image is, you know, con- considered to have an intent. But the thing is, is that, is there a possibility that with these, with these, uh, with these techniques and with these uh, sites that you're looking at is that there might be a, an unintentional, institutional systemic encoding of uh, agendas, you know, or, you know, or, or things, things like that, which then may come out from, from these. Yeah, because uh, the, the, the two, two things, coding, decoding. First, uh, we do have it in photography because both coding and decoding from biometric uh, uh, decoding and from coding in uh, ge- the original generative photography of the 19th century, they were actually invented at the same time. One was started by, uh, initiated by Galton and the other by Bertillon. So there is a great text by uh, Alan Sekula about uh, Body as Archive, which deals with these two streams, two yeah. innovations of photography in the realm of control. Yeah, and that's just like uh, the basic of the whole issue on uh, something I would like to call, uh, uh, it's a, uh, related to photography and uh, and biology it's it's some whole i would like to call it photogenetics the field of research of photographic information in the genetical field or system mm. in the system theory of the body mm-hmm. and i think it can be amplified in many ways so if we amplify this basic biological information to the system theory then we can also take the paradigm of these artificial genetical in, intrusions like uh, vaccines. Yes. So vaccine is something that is an information being carried by our body to the next generation, if they're kids, or, or to some other material in which we are carrying completely differently uh, material of the, uh, that originates from different type of source than the one that we are used to. So. If we are carriers of bi- biological or bi- biometric information that mm-hmm. has been inserted to us by our ancestors, there is a also part that we are bringing that is artificial information that interacts with our genes and medicaments are part of it. So mm-hmm. our medical history is an you know hidden thing that can impact the genetical material and can be carried through and can be seen a couple of generations later. But the whole structure of genotype is about being hidden. So genotype yeah. is something which is secret. It's a secret we, we bring through. Of course, it's not being uh, programmed. We can also find maybe different races in our genotype and amplify this gene contrary to other gene in order to rest- restore something that is important for uh, uh, preservation of uh, genetic genes in, in today. So also artificially formed medicines which we are bringing and along and that impacted our genetic material, they all functions actually as this, for example, blockchain technology, things mm-hmm. that, that are signed and are carried through uh, generations sure. of images or of uh, biological material. I think it's the same thing we are speaking about. because we are Yeah, about- you know, is, is that then maybe what you're, almost talking about then you know is is um you know this 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 notion of uh, of information through um 
genotypical um, metaphor, you know, for the the you know, the you know, encoding and decoding of information through uh, epigenetic memory. In in some ways, it it appeals to me in the you know the notion of steganography. You know, the idea of like the the idea of the the hiding of information. You know, through from generation to generation, waiting to be decoded. But the one thing I think is very interesting. The the one thing I think is interesting that you're talking about is that this this one subthread that seems to be going through the, <coughs> the entire conversation up to this point, and including this point, is the notion is the notion of virus. You know, in other words, the, the notion, and I'm looking at the notion of virus as site of, you know, like a delusional regime of control, you know, as a, and, and that sort of thing, both at the bio and the informa in, in, in information level. And maybe that at the time of the, uh, for our time in the pandemic, perhaps, you know, maybe this, you know, the, the site of the virus as the intersection between the bio, uh, bio info and necro, you know, is perhaps a, as a marvelous metaphor for, you know, the, the discourse of the time. Yeah, virus is a great metaphor because it works as a, as a definition of something that can change the logic of the system. So mm -hmm. if you are thinking about systems as a stable and we are trying to determine what the system is, virus is something that can destroy the system or can uh, wound the system, which means that we don't have the definition of the system. At the moment, we have the virus, otherwise it would not be a virus. It would be just integrated inside something which we call the system. Like right. Domesticized, domesticized. So I would say that, you know, uh, but just going back, when mm -hmm. you're speaking of technography, I just remembered an example of the way that you can intrude uh, on biopolitics. For example, um, uh, intentional raping of women in war. It's an inserting of uh, biological information of the other nation, of the other race into, you know, as a virus type into a genetical material of your enemy, trying mm -hmm. to send it as hidden material to the future. So that's something that we see as a, as a possible information intruding uh, biopolitical freedom. And regarding the necropolitics and viruses, I would say that, that it's the paradigm of time, but it also speaks about, uh, I would say, uh, uh, the problem in which our system theories had came into. We are having the problem that system theories, although they are really important and paradigmatic for the last uh, 20 years of our thought, have still not managed to uh, improve the idea of uh, universal knowledge in a way that we are still having our knowledge being separated in small departments. So currently having the so-called animal origin virus being researched into human medicine, analyzing the animal studies at the same time and without taking parameters of the climate changes and so many complex paradigms we need to in order to define and to capture that virus from different sides, fix enough of the limits of our own uh, science and the way that we are being imprisoned in this type of bubble in which we cannot define anything but own borders. So it would also speak in advance of the theories of the exchange between biopolitics and infopolitics in the way that we actually do have them in order to define our own borders, because our systems are not open enough to define them differently. For a moment, I just I just started blanking this for a moment. Um, what you're talking about at you know at one point is you know this idea of the virus and you know the the notion of control. The other thing that I'm thinking about here is that in the first chapter of um, Critical Art Ensembles, I think necropolitics and 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 aesthetics. The notion that, um, okay, so you're talking about control, your know, control systems, say like systems theory, like, you know, Forrester and such, and then also as cybernetics, such as Viner and Mead and all, you know, they, these are a couple of different schools. So the other thing is that we're seeing that these things, and then also then, you know, Deleuze's critique. And so the thing is that these things are, you know, we're seeing that these things are at least insufficient um, if not incomplete, the, the issue to me then I, uh, I'm thinking about is that then what 
Kurtz is getting at, I mean, Kurtz and CAE is getting at, and also Adam Curtis in hypernormalization is the notion that we are reaching a stage now in which we thought that systems theory and cybernetics was able to deal with a complex, you know, with, with these complex systems, but we've reached a limit of indeterminacy, you know, in which the systems have gotten so complex that our current, you know, paradigms of, of being able to analyze and control and such are currently in, in, insufficient, you know, to, to do this. And I'm just kind of wondering what might be an exit strategy, you know, a potential exit strategy, you know, for this, you know, would it be, you know, you know, some, in some of these areas of, you know, virus and genetics and so, you know, something like this and, and trying to, the thing is, is that I don't see an exit strategy in this. So, so what do you think? The thing is that we are seeing that now we are we started to define the whole thing about the biopolitics and infopolitics as a, as a basic binary from the beginning. That in the moment when we are having the binary and definition of the politics as a territorial and national state organized mm -hmm. and organized out politics and censorship, which is again state institution and so on, right. uh, we are constantly being stuck inside a circle in which we cannot deal with the virus. So for example, national states cannot deal with the virus today. And right. no biopolitics is capable at this moment dealing with the virus. There is always breakthrough the virus through some other way. Yes, and I, you know what? I want to jump in just for a split second and saying that also in the info, info space, that fake news is also another way of saying that it can't deal, that, in, that info, info politics and the info state can't deal with the virus as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the thing is that the whole definition of biopolitics and in, in, uh, infopolitics has been done on the macro level. They see like, they seem to be like a dualistic, opponent, stable and fixed binaries in concept wise. Right. But if you take them in this micro level and on the level of the elementary information in which gene equals the, uh, you know, uh, genetic, phenotypical or uh, phot photographic information yeah. are equaling to the combination which can all become viruses at certain point. Everything mm -hmm. becomes viruses. Yes. Lower person says language is a virus. So everything can be virus and become viral. And mm -hmm. body is by the definition viral. It affects other body in order to create a new body. So yes. there is always from one body to another body and there is a problem of the certain type of the infection and crossing the body boundary in order to procreate. So it's right. me and you plus, you know, equals whatever children, not me and you, but you know, and it's, sure. uh, yeah, there is like the, the basic of the system is, is to allow viruses to freely pass in order to continue life and, and, and morph life to be capable to adapt to its surrounding because it's we plus our viruses that are being brought up to this stage and that are surviving in this new environment and being so me is a compilation of viruses so the thing is that at the moment we stop believing that virus is something that breaks the system and we start believing that vi virus is a part of the system because it's integrally being defined by the smallest element of the system mm -hmm. which is genetic material mm -hmm. then we are going to be able to redefine biopolitics and infopolitics on a completely different and non-binary level and non-macro level of the you know nationalistic uh, or, or, or 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 per, or perhaps going etymologically to the radix you know is looking at the you know the virus uh, you know as a side of radical politics yeah that i think there is is interesting and the perhaps you know the notion of virus as virus is a genotypical metaphor because there are points in which actually beneficial code, you know, has been, you know, is, is being used in therapies, you know, through modified viruses and such. So in other words, we can say that, you know, the virus is more or less as a, more or less as a, and in, as, as a, as a, whatever, biological informational unit, or even a discursive unit, that all these layers of, of, you know, scientific and cultural and political things you know, are, are now based based around is a very interesting metaphor so the thing is is that maybe as we start wrapping things up uh, you know maybe this is the idea in which looking at these you know different different types of uh, different types of politics perhaps the virus might actually be 
you know, a, poten a, a, a potential exit vector, you know, for, you know, a lot of these things. Yeah, yeah it might be because it's, uh, it's the one that upgrades the biological material, uh, adapting it to new circumstances and it shifts the level of the game constantly. Yeah. So every time there is, you know, there is a new level of the game in which you are having a, a, a player that comes with a virus and shifts the level of the game and then changes the rules of the game. And then uh, also the rules of the biopolitics are being changed. Uh, if, if we don't necessarily look at it at the virus as, as threat, you know, but look at it as apparatus, maybe we can look at it as a, you know, as a form of a homeostatic, homeostatic you know, regular reg, you know, regulator of a systemic regulator, which could be very, which could, I, I think, be a very interesting discursive tool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a thing that we need to think about, for example, now in the times we are having this uh, in Europe, the, the theme of migration. The migration mm -hmm. was a theme mm -hmm. until, you know, it's, it was everywhere in news, was a migration and crossing the border of, of the, this uh, Europe, uh, European Union, everywhere, all until we had virus. And then suddenly something small as virus manages to break through all the boundaries of the Europe while migrants are supposedly staying on the other side. But the thing is that viruses are also carrying the different types of information which can work against the whole thing, which is called you know, the, the power of Europe in the way that they can change the rules of the game or they can also upgrade it to completely different circumstances. Sure. Viruses are currently doing macro political changes. So they have power to change to uh, from neoliberal to local community society, sure. uh, they, they have power to to stop ships, to, to stop trade, and they have actually the power to bring capitalism to the end. Well, one thing that we, one thing that we've been proven that has been proven in, in many places is is that the macro the macro political is is extremely vulnerable to the asymmetric. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's what it's, the, the macro looks for the macro. And so the thing is, is that, you know, it, and the thing is, is that the virus, you know, is the almost not just the micro, it's the molecular, you know. And so the thing is, is that the macro is looking for a system, you know, a system, a, another system to deal with. And basically what happens is that the virus is merely looking at, you know, what, you know, what, what what metaphorical space it 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 locates itself within in in the system and and how it can just deal with what it does, yeah. you know, and that's very interesting. So okay, well, I think this has been a fantastic conversation. I appreciate your time, and I think we got into some. I think we got into some very interesting ground. Yeah, it was really interesting, and I'm looking forward to reading. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so.